Hi everybody, uh, today we are going to see how to sample features from your spatial datasets in a grid range. We are going to uh, do this using ArcMap. Ok, so here we are in the uh, ArcMap. I have here uh, the land cover the land cover type from a particular watershed in Quebec. This is a project uh, what I'm working with. And well, the number one are uh, lakes or water bodies, number two are wetlands, number three are forests, four are shrubs, and number five are exposed land. Uh, well, I know this because I, I, I did this geospatial dataset. And well, I have this in a technical report uh, that I did. I specified uh, what is what. Okay. So then we have this, and we also have let's uh, disappear it for a second and appear this. We also have a um, file or a, a, a layer that shows the evapotranspiration from uh, this part. I took this from Modis the mod 16 product if you, uh, which is an algorithm that works with uh, satellite data so well I have here all the evapotranspiration values that are shown in this map as we can see there are a lot of them and well what we are going to do is to put a fishing net or a grid here and we are going to uh, sample what is the land cover in that grid cell and what is the evapotranspiration value in that grid cell so first we're gonna do the fishing net as ArcMap code uh, or fish net so let's create it let's uh, save it here just as fish net we are gonna use the land cover as a template so all the extension of this fish net will not go further from our uh, land cover and then we are gonna specify the number of rows that we want let's say 100 the number of columns let's say 200 and here the cell size width 0 and 0 because we already specified the number of columns and rows that we wanted and then you should be uh, sure to enable this uh, uh, to enable it to create the label points ok so make sure it has a check in it well just put ok and you will be doing your uh, grid, okay. Perfect. Uh, it's very small. As we can see. Uh, let's make a zoom in it. Well, we can see that it's really small, but at least uh, we can see it now. So then, what we're gonna do for uh, let, let's see at the attribute table which is very important this is the attribute table of the red uh, dots here so they just have an, an, an ID number they just have their specification that is the shape of them and well another ID which uh, is just uh, empty and well then uh, what we want to do is to sample the data so we are gonna use this join and relate we're gonna join uh, join data from another layer based on spatial location yes we want to do that we want to do it from land cover and from evapotranspiration we see here that the only option that we have is land cover we're gonna get into that in a minute later so it specifies your joining polygons to point that makes sense because the polygons if the land cover data, the points uh, are gonna be these uh, this, uh, labels, these little uh, dots, which can be our samples. Okay, so we will take the point as a sampler. 
and each point will be given all the attributes of the polygon that it falls inside okay that makes sense uh, we're gonna uh, save it as let's say uh, fish net and land cover okay or okay so let's save it like that well let's put okay it will take a while because it needs to sample 100 or 200 um, points so well it will take a, a bit of time let's wait okay guys so once the process is finished we will have this the fish net label which was the uh, the one uh, that we had before the process and this that is the the new one so we can see in the attribute table what does it contain so well here's it it has the id number of the point the shape of the point and then it starts with the land cover id number and a lot of things that has the land cover uh, the, the land cover layer but we as we are only interested in indeed the land cover we're gonna make sure to raise the other one uh, we can do this uh, with the editor so let's store these fields up let's store it up so we won't get confused perfect so we can uh, stop editing here nice job so we have that every point is related to a land cover type here we see a lot of zeros but why is it that well it is because as since we have just one two three two five uh, the zero it specifies that there is no land cover type specified in that grid cell which makes a lot of sense because not all the points are uh, uh, have a, a land cover type not all of them matches uh, matches uh, very well with the land cover type so it's okay the zero just indicates that there is no uh, land cover type land cover type data then we already start to see ones three five and well more zeros and more ones two three and four five perfect so just uh, let me turn this on for a second perfect so as we can see this uh, colorful uh, background is the land cover data so any point that uh, is in here will have a uh, land cover value from 1 to 5 and if the points belong uh, if the points are here where we don't have land cover data they will have an automatically zero okay so then we need to uh, join this table this new fish net with the evapotranspiration but it does not appear here it is because this join data only works if the data is a polygon so we can use this tool raster to polygon the input raster will be this, which is the evapotranspiration data. Okay. And simplify polygons. Okay. So well, then. here we go. So well, now we have the evapotranspiration data as a polygon. So we are going to join the, the information of the data in the fishnet of land cover that already has the data of the land cover we're gonna uh, merge it or join it with the transpiration data that falls inside we're gonna put ok and here we go ok so now we have the transpiration data and land cover data all in one uh, grid. We have sampled 2,000 points, and, and here we have it. Let's see 
to the attribute table uh, we have the ID number of each point, the length cover uh, from that point and the grid code uh, the grid code is actually the um, about the transpiration data and well uh, we have uh, all the, the all these all these points uh, until we get the 2000 uh, so for instance uh, for example uh, using this we can see how much evapotranspiration is uh, going on related uh, to the land cover, for example, let's take a look at one graphic that I obtained. So I joined the evapotranspiration data with land cover type from all the uh, 2013 uh, from eight day data sets. So, uh, well, we can see all the evapotranspiration uh, from water, wetland, forest, rock, and exposed land from all the year. So, well, this, this can be useful or, well, for sure you have in mind a lot, of, uh, a lot of other stuff so well I hope you like it my name is Bernardo and see you in the next video bye bye